Hey everybody, I wanted to make a quick video this week to talk about some of the first uh, summative assessments that you turned in for this trimester uh, as a way to review some key concepts, make sure that everybody understands them. One of the things you need to understand about enzyme activity are the things in the environment that can affect their activity. And so everybody saw a model uh, investigation of temperature affecting enzyme activity that I did. The reason for the effect on enzyme activity was related to the speed of collisions and the frequency of collisions um, that happen as the temperature increases or decreases and the effect that has on enzyme reaction rate. Um, and then you were assigned one of two variables and so I'd like to review that not only for you to look at what the work you completed but also for everybody else to see the work that um, that had to do. So one of the one of the things that can affect reaction rate in a cell or in the human body is the availability or the concentration of the substrate, the the material that's either going to get put together or broken down to 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 carry out the reaction. And I'm not going to show. I don't have all the data here, but this is a figure that one of the students that did the concentration of substrate generated. And this scored quite well. It has well labeled, uh, it has a title, it has a legend, um, the X and the Y axis are well labeled. Uh, I would like this to say millimoles of glucose produced per minute, that would be a bit more accurate, but we have error bars and they represent two standard error of the means, not just the one standard error of the mean that you calculated, but double of that. Um, so what do we see here? We see as substrate concentration increases, the reaction rate also increases. However, some of the variables have overlap in their, um, in their means, in the average. And so one of the things I asked you to do, and one of the things you were assessed on was to discuss the results of the experiment. So if you look at this, uh, you could make the claim that as the substrate concentration increases, the reaction rate also increases. However, for some of the concentrations, particularly the higher concentrations, the error bars overlap. What does that mean? A lot of you said uh, that the results are not significant, which is not exactly what it means. That's kind of right, but it's like a throwaway statement that will not earn you points on the AP exam, for instance, and really doesn't show that you understand fully what it means. What it means is, yes, that the differences between these means are not significant, but what it's really talking about is this mean compared to this mean. And what we, what, what the error bar overlap tells us is that we cannot be confident that those two means are actually different, right? So yes, they're not statistically significant, they're not significantly different, but what's not different? The means, the average number of, or millimoles of glucose produced when the substrate concentration is 75 compared to 100. Now, that may very well be true. However, the error bars do not overlap in this case, so we can definitely say that an increase in concentration led to an increase in reaction rate in this case, right? But the effect starts to slow as we get to higher and higher values. And that would actually reflect if we graphed it as a line graph, you'd see an, a sharp increase and then a leveling off, okay? Um, so when you wrote about your error bars, you needed to talk about the difference between the means and what they tell you, whether the means are actually different or not. Um, Explaining the results in terms of the structure and function of proteins. In the case of substrate concentration, so we have the enzymes, we have the substrate, they're kind of running into each other. If you have more of the substrate, there's more opportunities for them to run into the enzyme. That's it. That's why it happens. So this relies on collision theory. So when you're asked to explain the results, you need to come up with some biological principle that explains why the observed behavior occurred. In this case, it's because collision theory tells us that if you have a greater number of substrate, that there's a greater chance they're going to run into an enzyme. That's it. More collisions, 
more enzyme activity, higher rate of reaction. Now at some point you have so much substrate that all of the enzymes are, are always reacting, meaning you've reached your maximum threshold for reaction rate and no matter how much more substrate you add, there just aren't enough enzymes to react any faster. Okay. Now then there were questions four and five. Now if you did this, you know what they are, but if you didn't look at them, you were asked to, to think about where milk is digested in your stomach, in the brush border of the small intestines, and the milk stays in that region of your small intestine for about 30 minutes. So if you drank too much milk, or if you're lactose intolerant, it makes you, it gives you an upset stomach because the lactose isn't fully digested. Um, why? Based on the results. And the answer in this case has to do with the concentration of the substrate and the amount of time that is available to carry out all the reactions. So if you have lactose that remains unreacted after 30 minutes, you're going to get an upset stomach. So the problem is, is that the lactose is only in that region for 30 minutes. Some of you tended to focus on there being too much milk, which isn't exactly the problem. It's that there's not enough time. If the milk would just stay there, the enzymes could keep reacting and reacting and reacting. Eventually, they would break down all the lactose. So the issue in that case isn't the number of enzymes. You could, you could break down all the lactose with one enzyme. You just have to give it enough time to work. The problem is that, and so the problem isn't too much substrate. The problem is not enough time to get to that leveling off phase that we see here. Okay. And then the last question asked, um, what else could you do to, to, um, to respond to an increased concentration of lactose that would allow all the lactose to be digested? And I gave you a hint. I said, there's one other way you can increase re enzyme reaction rate. And it's actually what your body does. So if you drink a bunch of milk, your body responds by producing extra lactase, the enzyme itself. So if you have more enzyme, you can react the substrate at a faster rate because there's more enzymes interacting again collision theory comes in so review your results on that if you decide you're like oh yeah i got some points wrong i could explain it better now you go ahead and rewrite that and resubmit it now let's look at your ph so those of you that did ph same deal um, you were asked to develop an experiment where you changed the ph and you measured the reaction rate you could have generated a graph like this. Again, there should have been a label here, mean reaction rate in millimoles per minute. But again, we have a graph and we have nice error bars. Again, the error bars should be talked about in terms of um, the difference between the means. Um, there is no statistically significant difference between the value for a pH of four and a pH of eight. However, um, clearly they there was an increase and then a corresponding decrease so you would talk about that trend um i made a mistake here it says optimal temperature if you wrote about temperature you were supposed to write about ph in this one that's my mistake but if you could go back and fix that that would be great um structure and function of proteins this one can't be explained by collision theory ph is going to change the interaction between the amino acids so um, amino acids are interacting and folding the protein in a particular way because of, of those chemical bonds and the change in pH can change those chemical bonds uh, causing an increase or a decrease in the overall rate. So if the, if the active site on the enzyme changes just a little bit, you might still get enough, some reaction occurring, but if it changes too much, you get no reaction. And if it's in its optimal environment, you get the best possible reaction. And then it asks you to do some background research on where lactase is found in living things and relate it to the, well, lactase is found in your small intestine. Um, go and find out what the pH of your small intestine is. Uh, I think you're going to find a pretty direct relationship between the reactive rate, reaction rate and your small intestine. Your small intestine has a pH of about 7, right? So it makes sense that the enzyme is optimized to work in an environment with a pH of about 7. Now, they didn't test exactly a pH of 7 here. They tested 6. But it falls off pretty quick. If you get higher than that, you become too basic. 
the environment is no longer ideal, your reaction rate goes down. Likewise, if it's too acidic. So lactase can't be found in the stomach. It's way too acidic. At a pH of about 2, lactase doesn't do anything in your stomach. It's only functional in your small intestine. So uh, there are your results. Uh, hopefully that made sense. There was one other enzyme research activity that you did. I gave you some feedback on that. Um, a lot of you struggled to make good reasoned arguments. You can look at my, and, and to create a controlled investigation. If you'd like to redo that one as well, please go ahead based upon my feedback or visit me during my office hours and I can explain to you uh, I can, I can help go through that with you a little bit more if you'd like to redo that. You can redo this one as well. Just make sure you let me know if you decide to redo one of these summative assessments. All right. Good luck, guys. Thanks.